All right, y'all, welcome back to the channel. We're doing another reaction video. We wanted to follow up on Amos Miller, the Amish farmer that was being attacked by the federal government. And what was very interesting when we posted our original video, um, there was lots of different comments uh, in the comments section, and we do read all the comments, and we try to correspond with the comments, but there was lots of these comments of like, yeah, but you gotta follow the rules, and all this kind of stuff, and uh, you know, the rules and the stuff and the things, and all that stuff. If any of y'all have never had an altercation with the Just Us system, um, you probably wouldn't understand and I try to explain <laughs> to everybody, uh, we are all breaking hundreds yep. <clears throat> of rules every day and it's only significant when they want to abuse you, extort you, fine you, steal from you, uh, perform asset for forfeiture or whatever. So all that being said, that is part of why this is so significant. Now, there have been other videos about Amos Miller yep. and uh, people that have their own private member associations that direct sell and Amos Miller's a dummy and he's an idiot and he's doing it wrong and all that stuff. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna follow along. Uh, I found this really cool channel, The Shepherdess, and she's here in Texas as well. She's done a couple videos on um, the Miller's farm, and I wanna do a watch along with her. And then we have actually specific direct facts and information regarding the USDA and the CDC and the interaction with the Millers that actually state the facts so it's not conjecture, yeah. it's not hearsay, it's not this or not that. And what you are going to find out with these facts is that the government is extorting this man. They are abusing him. They are accosting him. You know, it's just, I mean, I've never heard of that happening for, you know, like an abusive tyrannical government abusing their power and like extorting uh. people. And I mean, they call it the district of criminals for a reason, y'all. Yeah. Okay, so let's watch along. This is a quick seven minute video and then, um, we are also going to provide the Give, Send, Go to help support uh, Amos Miller. So that'll be in the description below. Real quick, go check out our t-shirts. We have Go Green Compost of Globalists and We Are the CO2 t-shirts. We have another t-shirt called Make Common Sense Common Again. And then we have another one that is, it's not about right or left, it's about right and wrong. So go check out those new t-shirts if you want to support the channel. Also, the honey is now available. It's all restocked on the website. Go check it out. We have from gallon size honey containers for the crazy honey people out there that really, really love our honey. Like us. <laughs> all the way down to um, some, some real small honey jars as well. So anyway, go check them out. Let's get into the video. All right, last week I put out a video encompassing everything that's been swirling around the internet on the Miller's Organic Farm case. However, this week I went a little bit deeper and I looked at court records from the very beginning of this particular case. And what's coming up is going to be a summary from beginning to where we stand today. Now this is not a legal video. I am not a legal professional. I have done my research and if you are a legal professional, please comment down below based on the court records from this case. And I wanna ask you really quickly to please share this video, whether it's with a legal professional that could actually help Miller or just on your social media. It's important to keep this story at the forefront and not allow it to be brushed over. But first I wanna talk about why it's really important to talk about this case and keep it at the forefront. Amos Miller is running what is called a private membership association, a PMA. It is a fully legal workaround to the government's regulations on meat processing, on dairy, and so forth. Amos Miller is not the only one operating under this format. There are thousands of farmers around the United States that have adopted this workaround and are currently operating under it. And what it appears as though the USDA is trying to do in the Miller's organic farm case is to pierce the legitimacy of the private membership association format for buying and selling food. And if the USDA succeeds against Miller's organic farm, the thousands of others working under this PMA format will be soon targeted. 
what the private membership association so that's why this is so important because you know what they try to do is establish case law mm -hmm. and then they just say well it's just like the amos miller versus mm -hmm. the fda usda cdc and all that stuff so uh, that's what makes this issue so important and this topic so important, especially the fact now that it's getting so much exposure and attention. And uh, it was just on Dell Big Trees, The High Wire. It was on Fox News. Uh, I was on uh, Tucker Carlson, I think. Not that I watch Fox News, but uh, <laughs> so it's, it's really important. We want to definitely avoid this case law. And once you hear the rest of the story and the rest yeah. of the facts, you're going to see how much more important it is you're also gonna see how much more despotic and tyrannical it is. Mm -hmm. Association does is it allows growers to really work around a lot of the regulations surrounding meat, dairy, poultry, etc. Regulations that I would truly argue are not intended to help but hinder small food growers from moving forward and from succeeding on the market. So without further ado, I'm gonna go from start to finish. That's why uh, Representative Thomas Massey is presenting a bill on meat processing hmm. because he sees the convolution of all this FDA regulation and how difficult it is to follow all these procedures. Once again, I mean, the whole concept of regulation, it has nothing to do with keeping anybody safe or healthy, no. um, AKA uh, glyphosate. Okay, glyphosate is FDA approved to spray on your food. Um, it's not good, all right? All right, it's not good and it's approved. Okay, and everybody's like, and that's why they got rules to protect people. Yeah, cool story, bro. They have, they could care less. You know why glyphosate is approved? Because they pay to play. Start to finish on the Miller's Organic Farm case. What I have done is I have put both the legal statements and the plain terms explanation of what they mean on that PDF. Link below to download your copy. The outstanding case started on April 4th of 2019 when the U.S. government came against Miller's operation for processing meat without a federal or state inspector on site. Any meat processed in the USA for public resale is required to come under state or federal inspection before that meat is sent to the consumer. Now the private membership workaround for this is the fact that this meat is being privately sold. It's not for public resale. And that is what Miller was working under. On July 11th, the court appointed Miller an attorney by the name of Stephen LaFuenta of Dallas, Texas. He is the court appointed attorney for Miller's case in Pennsylvania. On November 19th, the judge, Edward G. Smith, rules in favor of the U.S. On April 16th, 2020, and this becomes the game changer in this particular case, a consent decree is signed by the judge, Edward G. Smith. And I'm gonna read the definition of a consent decree from the Cornell Law School. And it says, a consent decree is a decree made by a judge with the consent of all parties. It is not strictly a judgment, but rather a settlement agreement approved by the court. And once approved by the judge, the agreement is binding and enforceable on both parties. A consent decree is not appealable, except that it can be set aside by the court for fraud on the part of one party or for error on the part of both parties. And what happened, as far as I can see from the internet, from these records, and from what I'm finding on the Miller's Organic Farm website, was essentially a cease and desist for Miller. It said that he could not freshly process any meat. And from a post from August 5th of 2021 on the Miller's Organic Farm website, it would appear as though Miller did give his consent. He posted what the judge required of him. He stated that they were not allowed to process any new meat products until a full inventory was given of what they have to the government. And again, reinstating a consent decree is not an admission of guilt, but unfortunately it does. The reason he did this is because he is attempting to comply. Yeah. And they are attempting to shut him down, okay? And they just wanna make an example. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, there's hundreds of thousands of dollars involved yeah. that they get 
paid because that's how this whole thing works. It does bind all parties to the agreement. And this is where some would argue that Amos Miller made a big mistake. But here's what I'm gonna argue. It is entirely possible that Miller was working under very poor counsel. As I'm gonna mention down the road, Miller has tried to get rid of this court appointed attorney to no avail. In fact, I'm going to be pulling up an article from Lancaster Online. And these are words from Miller's court appointed attorney, Stephen LaFuenta, about Miller, the one for whom he is to be advocating. He says, quote, I'm at my wit's end trying to reason with Miller. He comments that Miller is nice, but very impressionable. And you can be the judge, but in my opinion, these are not the words of a sympathetic advocate. After no, it's called sandbagging. When you hand down your court appointed attorney, you say, wink, wink, hey, buddy, you know the verdict that we want to get on this, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, you're going to do this pro bono or whatever, and for the favor, you get whatever. Advocate. After the consent decree is signed, Miller is forced into an inventory of all meat and animal body parts, whether packaged or unpackaged, that are on the premise at Miller's Organic Farm. On June 9th, 2021, Miller is accused of not ceasing meat operations at Miller's Organic Farms. He is found guilty on June 16th. And on August 19th of 2021, Miller appeals to the judge for a better judgment. On October 21st, Miller seeks to dismiss that court-appointed attorney, Stephen LaFuenta. And on February 7th, 2022, the court denies the removal of Stephen LaFuenta. Now, in the midst of all of this, an entity named Prairie Star National begins some legal interaction for Miller. Now, Prairie Star National was pretty quickly given the boot. On November 16th, quote, the clerk of the court is directed to reject any attempted filings in this matter by Prairie Star National, an unlicensed third-party entity espousing sovereign citizenship political beliefs. Can't give a lot of commentary on that. Prairie Star National has very little presence on the internet and very little credibility behind them. Miller really needs a solid legal defense. Someone who can loop back around to the reality that he is an established private membership association that was breaking no laws at the onset of this. But the bottom line was that this court appointed attorney remained Amos's attorney and on July 28th of 2022, Miller was threatened with imprisonment. On August 5th, 2022, Miller submits an appeal to the judge to simply stop, to basically stop the proceedings of the court. And that's when the Amos Miller story blew up in the media. Now the media has put a lot of different spins on it and that's why I wanted to present what I had directly from the horse's mouth, but it really truly needs to be our prayer and our effort to get Amos Miller a very strong legal defense. Because what is at stake here is not just Miller Organic Farms. What is at stake here is a very viable workaround. It's a legal way that we can continue to grow food privately without the government looking at every single piece of meat that we want to sell off of our farms. So we'll put the link down below, the full video uninterrupted. Check out The Shepherdess, subscribe to her channel. She's got some really great information. I wanna point out that the judge is prohibiting him <laughs> from shedding his legal counsel and mm. procuring other legal counsel. So- That's fishy. I don't know what's so legal about that. You mm -hmm. can't choose your own legal counsel. Um, and I also thought that it was really nice that his legal counsel basically said, you know, he's a stupid Amish guy. Yeah, you know, pretty much. He's, he's impressionable, you know. He's not a big smarty pants lawyer like me, you know. And all the, all his court appointed attorney was trying to get was some kind of plea deal mm -hmm. where you pay a bunch of money yep. and you get a slap on the wrist and you basically get destroyed, which is usually what they do. I'm gonna pull up, so we're gonna link down below, there's a give, send, go for the Millers, and we're gonna link that in our video, and um, if you could please share that. Yes, um, please. It's very specific, they wanna raise $305,066, and yep. this is for the judgment against him, uh, $305, and $0.72 in fines. It is, and, and all the information is here. Um, they have a couple other write-ups write by the Lancaster Patriot and Organic Wellness. Um, but what I wanna get into real quick 
and it just shows the extortion and what's going on. And I think it's very uh, applicable and practical to today after what we've all experienced the last couple of years. But let's, I'm gonna read one of these updates now. It seems that the accusations made against Amos Miller, the farmer in 2016, hmm where the CDC insisted that his raw milk killed a Florida individual has been popping up a lot lately. Cause that's what everybody, very many comments are like, yeah, but his raw milk killed somebody, right? And they discount the fact that, you know, he sold raw milk across state lines. Well, yeah. did he, or did somebody take his raw yeah, milk exactly. across state lines, right? And then what did that person do? And people are dumb sometimes. Yeah. People are so dumb that, uh, McDonald's had to print coffee's hot on a coffee cup. All right. <laughs> so don't spill this. It could burn you. Okay. That's how dumb people are. Okay. Uh, the masses, the general. Yeah. So to accuse anyone of somebody, it's the scariest thing in the world to think that just because some idiots may or may not have had your product. Right. So this claim is somebody drank his raw milk in Florida and yeah. it killed them. So now let's find out what the facts are behind that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's start with some facts about Listeria. The genus Listeria is currently comprised of 17 species, only two of which are pathogenic, meaning that over 88% of the Listeria species won't even make you sick. Listeria is also ubiquitous, meaning it's found everywhere and is on pretty much all food. However, it won't hurt you unless it's one of the two pathogenic species. And this is important. If there's a lot of that found, and lastly, Listeria has very specific DNA strains. Unless an exact match of the DNA is made between Listeria that's found in someone who becomes ill and the food in question, the two cannot be connected. Genetic sequen sequencing is an exact science, yet the strains allegedly found in the farmer's milk were only said to be similar. Hmm. They were not a match. But the FDA used this information anyway, counting on public ignorance to discredit Amos because his father had won a long battle legalizing raw milk in Pennsylvania. Oh, so was this payback? Oh, so let me see. So you're telling me it would be like, like let's say, let's say you were gonna get, let's say there was some kind of program where you got a lot of money if somebody got sick with a certain disease or illness, hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then that person was riding a motorcycle mm -hmm. and got hit by a car and uh -huh. they went to the hospital and they said, you know, this guy really died in a motorcycle accident, but you know what? If he has this disease, mm -hmm. we'll get 35 or $55,000 from the feds. So, I mean, I know this stuff doesn't go on, yeah. And I, no. I know that these federal agencies like the CDC don't do anything no. like that. Nope, they're very and, trustworthy people. And I and they get and they have just like beautifully wonderful people oh, like yeah. Dr. Fauci yes. running the show. I mean, these are admirable people. These yeah. are honest people. Yeah. Um. So they I would I, never lie to you. This this could just not be happening. This must no. be all hype. Yeah. 100%. And this Amish guy is just terrible. I mean, he just wants to poison people. He doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah. He doesn't have four thousand happy members nope. that want to support him and want to continue to buy from him. <sighs> Let's read one more thing here. Next, and this is the most important fact. The woman in question didn't even die from listeria. Hmm. Did she die with listeria or did she die from wisteria? Tragically, she died from stomach cancer. It was after her death that her family learned that she had listeria in her system. Her cancer was originally misdiagnosed and was treated and wasn't treated on time. But once the FDA's accusation of listeria came into play, the family was not able to sue the medical center for malpractice because of the contradictory diagnosis. Mm. So now you have more money in play, mm -hmm. right? And they're gonna get to avoid a med mal, right? Because they can blame it on the listeria yeah. when the lady died of cancer. And then you got all these people making other videos and all these comments. Wow, you gotta tell the other side of the story. You don't understand. Somebody died from drinking his milk in Florida. Yeah, she died of cancer. 
and they blamed it on the listeria. Yeah. And this listeria wasn't even genetically the same. It was similar. Okay. So the whole entire, all these yacking points and all this extortion and all this stuff is baloney. And they just want to extort a bunch of money out of this guy. They just want to shut him down. And it is tragic. And if you look and you, if you've never had to deal with the just us system and you've never had a judgment for you or against you, and maybe you've had a judgment for you in which somebody redacted of their own accord, there is so much stuff in the just us system. There's a whole lot of just us and no justice, okay? <laughs> and that's why we have to push this information out. That's why we yeah. wanna share it. That's why we need to support uh, Amos Miller, not just for his operation, but for all of us that want to grow our own food yes. and be able to share it with others and want to grow healthy food and see the CDC and the FDA mm. and the FBI and the CIA and ABC and yep. 123 and they are all a bunch of Gestapo Nazi federale scumbags. Yep. They are just, they're totalitarian tyrants. Now, are there two or three good people that work for the federal government? Maybe, okay? Yeah, maybe. I don't wanna give them too much credit, maybe. Um, if they are good, they should quit. Yeah, Okay, real. because it's a totalitarian, one world, I'm not gonna start ranting, but <laughs> it's just, it's disgusting, yeah. it's despicable. Look what they're doing to this man. Mm. He wants to be left alone. He wants to provide yeah. a service for people that appreciate what he's doing. Yeah. Uh, he's a pacifist, right? And I don't know about all these goofy comments about, you don't know Amish have guns. Look, we know Amish people. Personally. Um, we personally know Amish people. Uh, we know several Amish people. We have friends that also know a lot of Amish people and I'm completely unfamiliar with a bunch of, look, just because you're watching Amish Mafia on the Discovery Channel or whatever, all right, now that's a scam. That's not real, y'all, okay? Amish Mafia, I hate to break it to you. It's not real, okay? Oh, dear me. If you want a good laugh, you know, look up Amish Mafia. Oh, my word. But, um, so that's why it's really important. We want to put this out there. Uh, check out the Give, Send, Go. Please. Share it. Yeah. Spread the news. Spread the facts about what's going on. Please. And, um you know, pray about this situation. Let's hope that justice can prevail. Let's just pray that this guy can get some decent legal representation. Yeah. Um, they're gonna extort him for this 305,000, mm. and then they're gonna... So what is that for, the $305,000? Who's that going to and like why? What is that okay. for? So the USDA have come to a preliminary agreement under protest so he can at least start providing his members with fresh meat again. Okay. So see, so this is court fees. Okay. Check this out, y'all. This is how it works. Court fees, mm -hmm. cha-ching. U.S. Marshal fees, cha-ching. USDA fees, cha-ching, right? All this is about, where is, where is like, um, where's the lady that died yeah, from the listeria? Real. Where's her money? Oh, oh they nowhere. can't prove it in court because there's no facts, okay? <laughs> so there's no money for these people that were allegedly harmed Let's see, who gets paid here? Hmm. Uh, the court gets paid. The U.S. Marshals get paid. They should all be, they should be ashamed of themselves, the U.S. Marshals. They're just stooge, brown shirts. And then the USDA gets their fees for their investigation, their illegitimate investigation that drew no conclusions. And it's just like, it's just like the narc cop that goes to flip the guy in the apartment and he's got the dime bag in his pocket and Right when he needs to bust the guy, drops it on the floor. And says, oh, what do you got there, buddy? Oh, okay. That's a thing, too. And it's just, Literally. it's just over yep. the illegal limit, right? Yeah. It's just, you know, it's tyrannical, it's despotic, it's terrible. Yep. And uh, please share this information, uh, share this video, share please. the gifts and go. Pray about it. Yeah. And. Hope every now and then, y'all, every now and then, justice prevails and God's in control. Yeah. And, but our government is tyrannical mm. and terrible and out of control. And they've been this way. And, and I just want to.
point this out that this started happening under a different administration, okay? So the Sloppy Joe isn't doing this, right? No. All of these alphabet agencies mm -hmm. are despotic. They're all deep state. They're all corrupt. They're all unelected. They're all completely unaccountable to no one. And they all get their little fees. Mm -hmm. These judges get their fees. The courts get their mm -hmm. fees. The FDAs get their fees. The U.S. Marshal gets their fees. Yeah. Guess who doesn't? Guess the farmer pays the bill, right? Yeah. And guess what everybody else gets? Nothing. Everybody else gets trouble. Everybody else gets hassle. Everybody else gets more regulation. This is why we need more regulations. No. Dear me. No, all regulations do is muck up the works. Yeah. And none of these agencies long term do anything profitable nope. other than harass and collect. Yep. And that is the truth. And you know, my uncle is an FDA inspector and you don't understand. Well, get an honest job, yeah, exactly. pizzas or something. All right, all right, y'all. Well, that's just our two cents on the whole deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video. All right, see y'all later, bye-bye.